Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday, our second Sunday in the Advent season. Uh, we do are using the Kinder Mesa worship service, and on the back is actually a little bit of a history. Peg was able to find a little bit of where that comes from. It means children's service. So when you have time or if the sermon's not too interesting, you can read through the back of your bulletins today. Uh, we will... Before we begin with the ringing of the bell, we are going to begin with, we've been talking about uh, God's abundant blessings and inviting people forward, and Becky Lowe is going to talk this morning. Yes. Good morning. She's making me use this. Most of you know that I, I teach, and I don't stand behind a mic. I have a very big mouth. Um, when Cleon asked me to do this, I, I told him that I was not sure because I cry a lot. So you just have to know that. I just want to preface that for everybody. But then he asked me again and again and again, where is Cleon? <laughs> um, so I decided, well, okay, I'll just, I'll just do it. So... <coughs> um, when I was thinking about what a blessing is, um, I, and he asked me to do this, I didn't know what, I didn't, I just didn't know what to even say. So I started to think about what a blessing is to me. And a blessing to me is something that I am grateful for or something that can make me appreciate what I have or maybe something that I don't have. A blessing is something that touches my heart in a special way. And I do cry a lot. <laughs> So with that being said, what blessings have I had in my life? Well, um, I had to stop and think and think because truly everything to me has been a blessing. Um, as most of you probably know, I grew up on a ranch in outside of Wyoming in Medicine Bow. And we have hundreds of acres of land, uh, 300 head of cattle, horses, four-wheelers. I mean, what better life could a little kid lead? Uh, you know, you get to go do whatever you want to do in the great outdoors. It was amazing. Um, when I graduated top of my class, I went to a small school, uh, K-12. I graduated with 12 kids. Um, but I still, I always strived for more. Um, when I went to college and graduated there, uh, I met Chris, my husband, and we started the pursuit for looking for a job. And I said, how about we move to Custer, South Dakota? Well, it just so happens that my grandparents, um, when they were alive, lived on the eastern side of the state. So we had taken our spring break down there. And on the way home, we stopped and ate at the no longer Taco Bell in Custer, South Dakota. And he said, well, whatever. He didn't care. Um, So we came and thought we were going to end up in Custer, South Dakota. Well... A hidden blessing was we didn't. Um, We ended up in Fairburn. And um, the biggest blessing in moving here is we didn't have anyone. We have no friends. Okay. I cry a lot. I will say that. (laughs) We had no friends. We had no family. We knew literally nobody when we decided to come here. And what that taught us is that we had each other. That was huge. Yeah, so who else is crying? (laughs) Okay, so um, uh, finding, and then we ended up finding some great friends uh, in the Beast family, and they brought us here. And so now, you're a blessing. So, however, that is not why I'm here today. I feel like the little things that I don't always think about are the blessings that get us through our day-to-day lives. Here are some of the blessings that I have brought that I think has brought me closer to God in my personal life. I know that God has always been there, and I have always believed that. But I don't think that I am always fully aware of how, when I pay attention to my purpose, that he can touch and bless me in my daily life. So blessings to me are more than 
the big things like the obvious blessings I have my husband, my four children, um, my parents, my two sisters. I have six nephews, two nieces, and I have soon to be three great nephews. We have a roof over our head. I have a great job, and I have the ability to put food on the table, clothes on our backs, and lots of love in our hearts. But the little blessings is what, what I wanted to talk to you about more today. Blessings to me are when I am attending a volleyball game in Custer, and I slip and fall in the parking lot on the way into the school. Well, the volleyball game, A, was a great game, but the ride home was not very comfortable for me. Because <coughs> most of you probably know by now that I struggle with a lot of lower back problems. And a fall for me is really not a good thing. Um, anyway, on the way home, I got my cell phone rang and I didn't recognize the phone number. And on the other end was a high school kid from Hot Springs. See, he had found Rhett's iPod it, on the way in and all the chaos of me falling and my kids trying to pick me up and all of this, his iPod must have fallen out of his pocket. And that boy searched through his contacts and he found mom. And he dialed the number and he called mom, which was me. Um, these, toy, these two boys were a true blessing to me, not because that they found the iPod, but because you know, that boy told me that he would hate it for someone to steal his iPod, and he just wanted to make sure that ki the kid that owned it, it got returned to. The kid took my mind, A, off of my sore body, and reminded me that what I do for a living by showing kids a caring heart and how to give back to others is truly the reason why I am here. Another quick story that was a blessing was when I was telling, I think Becky shared this story, was when I was telling my hair lady about the popcorn ball project um, that the second graders did, which, by the way, thank you, everyone. That, on its own, was a true blessing. Um, I, there was another client in there, and the lady came up to me and asked me what organization I was with. And I told her I wasn't. I was just a teacher. And she looked at my hair lady and with this cute little smirk said, yeah, just a teacher. <laughs> well, I explained about the project, and she asked if she could donate and help, and she did. And uh, she wrote a check for $50. Well, this, to me, was a huge blessing because sometimes I forget why I do the things that I do. Uh, they cause a lot of extra work and a lot of extra, a lot of extra stress, but in the small blessings that keep us all going and this lady blessed me with a renewed spirit that I can and I will do more I am every day I am blessed every day to walk into a building and call myself a teacher God has chosen me to help mold these kids well if most, as most of you probably don't know this, I did not go to school to be a teacher. I went to school to be a biologist. And it would be a lot easier because I probably wouldn't be standing up here crying in front of my students right now. <laughs> Cleon. <sighs> I, growing up on a ranch, I loved animals. I knew I could never be a vet because the first time we had to deal with a prolapse cow, the smell I could handle everything, but the smell was atrocious. And I knew that that was not where I wanted to be, but I wanted to deal with animals. Um, and so, I, and I always knew that. But when I went to college, I had a professor tell me that there weren't a lot of jobs in the field of biology at the time, and maybe I should look into um, being a biology teacher, who well, I thought he was crazy because A, I had worked with kids, you know, in, when I was in high school and I hated it. Um, <laughs> but I went in and I said, okay, you know, what else do you have to lose? I took a class on teaching and I ended up in two classrooms and there, well, you know where I am today. So one of the best blessings in my life is that professor, he saw something in me that 
I didn't see. So I think that to end, I want to say that I have had many, many obvious blessings in my life, but the ones that I think mold us into the people we are or who we need to become to follow our purpose for living are the small ones that are there for us every day if we are willing to open our eyes and our hearts to see them. Thanks. Please join with me in the invocation. Prepare ye. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the message we have heard and proclaim to you, that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say we have communion with God while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light, we have communion with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. peace with every nation. 
confess together. Our Father, we have not fulfilled the hope in which you created us. We turn to you and ask for your mercy, that our sin might be forgiven and our guilt removed. Help us to learn from your word and from each other your will for our lives, so that with your help we can claim the inheritance you offer through your Son, our Lord Christ. Anyone who is in Christ is a new person. Old things have passed away, the now is new, and all things are of God our Father who has reconciled us to himself through Christ the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far does our Heavenly Father remove our transgressions from us. This is most certainly true. Good morning, everyone. Our gospel today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithful the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, The leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. 
the nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. We'll invite the children to come forward for our children's message as we sing the first two verses of He Came Down. This is the second week of the Advent season. And last week, it was love. You'll see that first banner with the heart. And does anybody know, what is that second banner? Light. 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 Okay. The gospel of Jesus is the good news and the light of the world. God so loved the world that God entered our world in a new way and will do so again. God has offered us new life that begins now and is eternal. So we are going to, Reese is going to light two candles. And notice which candle that she takes that flame from. We light the second candle, rejoicing in God our Savior, who has come to make all things new through his light. Let us pray. Holy God, we proclaim the good news that you are with us and that we have promise of new life. Amen. Okay, so light. Did you notice which candle that she took um, flame from to light the Advent candles? Does anybody know what that candle is? What do you think that candle is? Anybody know? It's a big candle. Yeah, it is. It is. See the... Picture? It even has a picture on it. What's the picture on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds us of Christ, Jesus. So we might call that the Jesus candle, and that's the where she got the flame from. She got the light was the Jesus candle, and we take it from that. Does anybody recognize these? When do we use these? Christmas Eve, right. And where do we take the light from when we light all those? Do you know where that comes from? Yeah. And then we take one and light it, and then we pass on the light. So we pass on the light. Yeah, I guess you should hold them out there. And we turn the lights down low. And we have all these beautiful candles lit. And the light, like that second banner, comes from the Jesus candle. And Jesus shares his light with us. That's why it's a beautiful way of lighting candles from that candle and passing it on. Because you, even if you don't have a candle and you don't have the flame, you have the light of Christ passed on to each of you. And do you know that when you do things that you become, like uh, Becky Lowe talked about, those little blessings, you become little blessings in other people's lives. And when you pass on a blessing, you are passing on the light of Christ to them. (gasps) That is really cool. I hope that you know that, that this Advent season, as we get ready for Christmas, that you have Jesus' light with you and that you can pass that on and be a blessing to others. Did you know that you were blessings to others? Now you do. Now you do. Now you know. Okay, I can take those back, and we'll say a prayer, and then you guys can have a treat if you want. Okay, so should we pray and repeat after me? Dear God, you are the light. We are your light. Help us share it. 
Amen. Okay, you can take a treat before you go back. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Oh, please stand. <laughs> Probably ready to stand up. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts and minds, be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Again, we have quite interesting readings for the season of Advent. And we wonder, we wonder what these have to do with this season of hope. Today, we hear John, be prepared. Be prepared. And I can't help but wonder if you feel prepared for the Christmas season. It's not too far away. How much do you have left to prepare? Do you have your to-do lists ready? Are you decorated like we're decorated at church here? And as you notice, now we have our beautiful poinsettias in place as well. Do you have your meal plan set? Do you have guests coming? Is your cleaning done? Have you done all those extra projects? Do you have clothes for kids for their Christmas programs? How much do you have to prepare? Of course, that's part of my to-do list. For I have, we have preparations as we think about family coming in for the Christmas season. And then you check your to-do list and you think, I have so much more to get done. Be prepared for this season. Many times try to make it easier by doing to-do lists or maybe simplifying things. Maybe this is the season of simplifying gift giving. For there's many ideas out there. I've heard from one family, for the adults, how they're simplifying by by donating and thinking of the money they'd spend on gifts and donating to a charity. Maybe it's Kids Against Hunger, taking an envelope, 
and giving uh, those to one another. Maybe it's simplifying by only getting certain things and being very mindful of the holiday season and what Christmas season is about. There's many ways to simplify so that our to-do lists can shrink down and our preparations can be turned in a different direction. Well, be prepared. We're not the only ones who prepare as well. For as you think about this cold, this winter weather that comes, do you notice those animals that prepare and get ready? Maybe the animals that have to, the squirrels that have to get their food ready. You think about um, all the, the nests and the different things that, where animals have to be prepared to get ready. We're also supposed to prepare for emergencies, are we not? Why do you think schools go through mock drills for fires and tornadoes and other situations? They are trying to be prepared. And again, with this cold weather, we are told to be prepared. Have emergency supplies in your vehicles. Have things prepared in your home in case we don't want it to happen, but in case we lose electricity again. How many after that blizzard went out and got certain other items so that you were ready for the next time? Be prepared so that there may be calm amidst the chaos that comes through emergencies or comes through things that we don't know yet. John the Baptist, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Those words from Isaiah. And in some reading I've done, they looked at that the way it's put into our reading. You always hear John, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, what if it was John, the voice of one crying? In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Does that give you a different image in your mind of what that preparation may be? Maybe there's some mindfulness of chaos. Maybe there is some mindfulness that we can't see clearly, and yet the way is being prepared for us, even in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Now this image of John is so powerful, and the words that he speaks and he throws out at the Pharisees and Sadducees. How many times have you gone over to a group and said, you brood of vipers? You brood of vipers. Now, I'd love to say that I've done that, but I've never done that. I've never had a reason to call somebody a brood of vipers. And yet, he is completely addressing those who flee in fear. For they scurry away and hide. You who are fearful of what is to come, prepare the way. Now, all of these, again, isn't about giving us a mind of fear, even though it may sound like that. Prepare the way. Get ready. Stay awake from last week. Be mindful. What are we preparing our hearts and minds for? For, again, we look at the colors that are around us, and we see that color of hope, that color blue. Prepare the way for Christ to dwell in your hearts and in this season. For Christ himself has already prepared the way for you. What does it mean to be prepared? What does it mean to get ready for a season that once again we read the story of the Christ child born for you. In that image of those preparing, in that image of getting ready, I'd like to read a poem to you. It's by an author, Joyce Rupp, where she writes in this Advent season about preparing the way so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And she uses that image 
of a bird's nest in preparing for the coldness of winter. Looking high into winter trees, I see the distant nests cradled in arms of branches. Nests, round, full of warmth, softness in the welcoming center, a circle of earth's tiny goodness flown from the far corners, patiently pieced together and hollowed into a home. Nests, awaiting the treasure of life, simple, delicate dwelling places from which song will echo, eventually echo and freedom of wings give flight. Advent has been on my mind. Prepare the nest of heart. Patch up the broken parts. Place more softness in the center. Sit and warm the home with prayer. Give the Christ a dwelling place. For in this season of Advent, of God's love and light, we sit and warm the home with prayer so that we give Christ a dwelling place within us and within our community. As you are mindful in your preparations and your to-do lists and all that comes with this season, may you find a moment to dwell in the name of Christ who brings you light and love. Amen.
Please join with me in saying together our statement of faith. We believe we are chosen by God, our Creator, to participate in the ongoing work of creation by holding life sacred and being good stewards of God's gracious gifts. We believe we are chosen by Jesus Christ, our Savior, to participate in the ongoing work of spreading the good news of God's saving love and serving others in the name of the Lord. We believe we are chosen by the Holy Spirit who calls us through the gospel to believe in Jesus Christ, gathers us as a community of believers to worship together and support one another, and enlightens us with gifts of love, forgiveness, and everlasting life. We believe the Holy Spirit nourishes our growth, preserves us in faith, and keeps us in God's grace forever. Amen.
Let us all pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll continue on page 9. for our time of prayer. Our prayer list is on the back of your bulletin insert. We'll remember, um, in addition here, the uh, family and friends of Alice Gregerson who passed away. Are there other additions to our prayers today or updates? Following each prayer petition, it will end with, Hear us, O God, and the congregational response is, Your mercy is great. In hope and anticipation, we pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Renew us in the covenant of your Son, O Holy One, and revive us by the outpouring of your Spirit, who leads us to wisdom, understanding, and faithfulness in you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
Establish harmony in all of creation, that all living things may work according to your love and generous purpose. Fill the earth with your goodness and glory. Hear us, O God. Send your spirit to those who hold power and authority among the nations. We continue to pray for peace and for righteousness, as well as safety for those men and women who serve in the military and find themselves in harm's way. Hear us, O God. By your word and your people, encourage and give heart to those who have lost hope in the face of depression, disease, and the loss of loved ones. This morning, we especially pray for Holly, Pat, the family of Alice, Levine, Dale, Betty, Bruce, Jerry, Carol, Carrie, Michaela, Deanne, D Dennis, Jim, Bill, Char, Nancy, Cynthia, Tom, Rosie, Geraldine, Wanda and Jim, Jessica, Gary and Donna, Larry, Ken and Vera, and those that we name before you silently or out loud. Hear us, O oh God. Shape this faith community into a place of welcome and support for all people. We are thankful that we are included as a part of your family, and we pray with thanksgiving for Rebecca and Darren and the finalization of their adoption for Leah as they gather together in love and the promise of family. Hear us, O oh God. You have gathered the saints into your holy and eternal presence. Make us steadfast in the faith until we are all made one in your new creation. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us join together to pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The announcements are in the uh, insert in your bulletins as well for the upcoming schedule. We do have council coming up on Tuesday night. We have uh, dog night, um, our final dog night for December until uh, we begin again in January. Also today is the uh, ha ha event over at the school. So there'll be ha ha ha. ha. There'll be a group uh, that is, are doing caroling and there's food, games, all kinds of things. So if you're looking for uh, something to do today, that's from 11 to 4, if I have that correct. Um, also, if you have to work on a committee report, um, those, the deadline is supposed to be today, so she won't be working in the office, so you might be able to sneak that in Monday morning, but try to have those, as we prepare for our annual meeting, to have those um, annual reports for your committees um, an update. They don't have to be long, but just what's happened um, over this year in 2013. Uh, upcoming opening day for God's Cupboard as well, December 20th. Uh, please check the rest of the schedule there. Um, any other announcements? Uh, we do greatly appreciate those. In some ways, it gives us a way to know more about one another and then how we see God at work in our lives. So um, 
I knew she cried, so I was trying to like be really, you know. <coughs> <laughs> Uh, there is an announcement in there as well about the, the new furnace that we have, and we greatly appreciate those who've made financial contributions toward that. That is amazing that we are almost there for the, for the cost of the furnace, which we really appreciate today in this cold weather. So it needed to be done, and we're very thankful for that, that we have that. Okay, so if you put your the offering for or the money for kids against hunger in the envelope, you can put it in the um, bag in the back, or you can put it in the offering plate as well. And we introduced that to kids at dogs' night as well. And Judy talked about it, and she had kids were like, "Here, here, I've got quarters, I've got." <laughs> so it was, it was, yes, yeah, so it was, is very neat to see them get excited ab about that, that they could bring their quarters. Uh, in and they were ready to give them right then and there for for kids who who needed that. Oh. Anything else? Of course, we do invite you to come down for our fellowship time as well um, downstairs following worship. Oh. See what love the Lord has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. We'll join together in our closing hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Please stand if you are able. Go in peace, serve the Lord.